the death contract was executed in the early hours of a Wednesday. However, the body of the 33-year-old was located in the afternoon of the next day. Katerina Aragnostaki, an old nemesis of the security services, is the victim in a fierce war of settling scores in the endless chain of the Greek crime syndicate. The perpetrator must have been hiding in the trees, following her and entering the garage as she entered through in her car. The executioner opened the door of a 33-year-old sports car, which was rented, and opened fire from the passenger seat. The 33-year-old was shot all over her body and in the head. Her body was located by her mother the next afternoon. Katarina Bella Mafia, as everyone knew her on social media, had been scared lately. Random numbers had sent her strange messages to her cell phone. She knew that people with whom she knew, both in good and bad ways, had been involved in the bloody clearing out of the Athenian crime scene, and she had taken preventive action. She had installed an online camera system in her house and the underground parking lot, which she activated from her smartphone every time the black Mercedes with tinted windows approached the luxurious complex of General Dagli in Kivisha, where she had been residing for the last year. She was not armed, despite the fact that she was crazy about guns and had confided her concerns to a few people. At the same time, she was trying to live life normally, as if nothing was happening. Every morning, the 33-year-old girl with a large amount of tattoos went to the family business on Kivishia's Avenue, in and in the evenings, her with her two co-workers had funds in bars and main hangouts of the northern suburbs and the coast, while many afternoons she indulged in her favourite hobby, shopping, buying clothes and accessories of branded fashion houses. Besides, she had money as she came from a traditional family of Kipisha with a long history in the trading industry. But who and why wanted Katarina Bella Mafia dead? Did she know a lot and they had to shut her mouth? Was it to send a message to show the godfathers that they are not sovereign and great bosses of the night? Or was she actively involved in some cases resulting in her being targeted to the point that some people ordered a death contract against her in order to erase her from the equation. The Homicide Department's investigations began moving in every direction. They searched thoroughly through her past, contacts, acquaintances and opponents and tried to put together the puzzle of the six gangland murders from May 2017 in order to find common elements and solve the riddle of Mafia executions. In the photo that Katerina uploaded to Facebook on June the 1st, she wrote, First the smiles come, then the lies, and finally the bullets. White Rabbit. Since 2006, Katerina Bella Mafia had loved the nightlife scene. She liked the fun, the fit men with her tattoos, the gangsters, Around 2006, she met a man who put her in the world of the Athenian nightlife for good, involving her in many adrenaline rushing adventures, and finally, as it seems perhaps, leading her to her death. Then, at the age of 20, she crossed the threshold of Garda police for the first time, facing the charge of hiding a fugitive as she tried to hide the man she loved that the security services were looking to arrest. The 33-year-old was a woman with strong characteristics of narcissism. She had a big idea for herself, and a small one for others, and so she displayed an antisocial behaviour that gradually led to delinquency, a security officer described in a newspaper, wanting to give the profile of the woman slayed by 16 Kalashnikov bullets in the underground parking lot of the apartment building where she lived, in the centre of Kivisha. 
In fact, it wasn't the first time she had been involved in a shooting. It was May 2009 when 29 year old Maria Caffieri, the wife of a murdered godfather of the night, fell deceased inside a patisserie in Camigna. Caterina Bella Mafia was examined as a suspect, as the person who gave the order to take out the 29 year old, as there was information that behind this story was hidden sexual envy and jealousy. She denied everything, got rid of all charges, while her co-accused is the Albanian assassin who was accused of being the perpetrator in the attack with Vitriol against the lawyer Pavlo Sarakis and Costadina Kuneva. A few months later, the stunning brunette girl with tattoos is again on the radar of security services. This time from the prosecution of burglars and robberies. She is accused of being a member of a gang of robbers consisting of Greek and Albanian criminals and hacking money transfers. She is originally sentenced to five years suspended imprisonment. Her name now comes out in every big case examined by the security services. From the murder of the nightclub owner George Anagnostopoulos to the last liquidations. But police, however, were never able to prove her participation in the slightest thing. Rumours, say police, are sometimes spread with nuggets of truth and other times misleading evidence to blur the waters and divert investigations. The truth is that in October 2011, two men with helmets fired a grenade launcher on Veliku Street in Galazzi and shot a pregnant woman in the head who was getting into a black smart car. The victim was at the time 26-year-old Katarina Bella Mafia, who was transferred to the hospital and entered the intensive care unit. And after many months of hospitalization, she managed to stay alive. In fact, her child, who is the fruit of her love with a big name of the night, is saved. A little girl who is now seven years old and lived with her in the apartment on Strategudagli Street in Kipisha. According to people who knew her well, the ambush of Galazzi affected her. She faced death for the first time. She survived it, but realized that she was in danger. So, so according to information, she leaves for a long time to America. There, on the other side of the Atlantic, she manages to get back on her feet. Security police lose track of her and could no longer implicate her in the big cases they were investigating. Upon her return to Greece, Katarina Bella Mafia seemed to have changed. Visually, she looked transformed. Lots of tattoos all over her body, featuring a huge rose that starts at her left shoulder and ended at her arm, an inverted cross on her neck and a pistol on her right buttocks that reveals her love for weapons. She took care of her face and body and visited specialist doctors and gyms to correct her imperfections. She spent many hours a month in a spa to relax and take care of herself while her trademark was her long and always brightly painted nails. Caterina Bella Mafia loved luxury, travelling to Greece and abroad, constantly divulging in bazooka club fun and expensive shopping for clothes, accessories and shoes. Those who knew her say that in the house of Kivisha she had set up a special dressing room which featured her collection of expensive Louis Vuitton bags, MCM, Chanel, Dior and also 12 stilettos of Italian and French houses. Nor, of course, could she resist watches and accessories. Her wrist had always been adorned with the love bracelet by Cartier, while the necklace of the Vulgary Vulgary series with gold and black onyx by the anonymous jewelry house was a piece that had not been parted in recent months. Of course, Caterina Bella Mafia had a significant collection of watches with a preference for Rolex and Cartier. 
In her social media accounts, she shared with her followers moments of her life. Videos from nightclubs, photos of her fast car steering wheel, descriptions and images from the rich collection of her clothes. What characterized her was her weakness for the color black. Her hair was dyed the color of ebony, her colors were often black with rhinestones and other shiny elements. As for the cars, Lately she had been circulating it with a black sports Mercedes with tinted windows and a smart car similar to the one that had received her, she had received her gunshot wounds in Galazzi in 2011. She had been seen many times by people driving around in her Mercedes, but she had also posted on her Instagram profile other supercars such as Ferrari and the Porsche. Whenever you look for Katharina, you would find her on mobile, WhatsApp and Messenger. She was not hiding, says a person who knew her in a news article, and adds, she liked the fun and the nightlife. She went out almost every night and was a bazooki fan. Remos and Mazonakis were her favourites. Although open to everyone, the 33-year-old used to go to the bazooki with female groups especially with two of her close friends. She frequented the big tracks, threw flowers, drank moet, sang and danced. She was so generous that she almost never allowed the people who accompanied her to pay their share of the bill. Her activity on Instagram and Facebook was continuous, but in addition to the glamorous and star-studded frames of luxury and the beautiful life, there were others that showed her shooting with automatic weapons and displaying her skills. She uploaded such a photo on Facebook on June the 1st, writing below, first the smiles come, then the lies, and finally the bullets, white rabbits. Posts coded with hidden meanings that can be interpreted many times. Like the one she did five days before the killer with the Kalashnikov took her life with 16 bullets. There, she characteristically states, The next time I open to someone, he will be at my autopsy. Some thought she uploaded this post because she was scared, but others say it may have to do with her separation as she had ended a relationship she had recently had. She recorded everything, and police are investigating another plot that may open new leads for them. Many recordings she made talking on her cell phone or in the close contacts she had while archiving the material on her computer. They are trying to decipher this treasure of information, hoping that they will unlock not only the specific death contract, but also others that have been made in the past in Attica. Experienced homicide officers have marked two death contracts with a red marker. One goes back years and connects the attempted murder of 2011 in Galazzi. Maybe they say her murder is a continuation of the ambush in Veiku and has nothing to do with the current assassinations. It's possible the man who gave the order to clean her up seven years ago might have waited for the issue to be forgotten in order to return in 2018 and close an open account with bullets. The second death contract they are focusing on is the la in the last six months. A big name of the night with who the 33 year old's friends have always had an open war. In other words, it is possible that her murder is part of the restructuring of the Athenian gangland that is undergoing.